Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Offersen and today we are going to talk about something uh, called uh, ectoin. Uh, it's a, um, a molecule that uh, you might know from uh, when you are looking at uh, sunscreens and uh, we have looked at uh, various sunscreens uh, by now and uh, if we uh, take uh, one like uh, this one here like uh, called Heliocare or something like uh, this one here for uh, for kids, it's a P20 from Riemann, or uh, something like uh, La Roche Posay, this one here, then uh, you will find that uh, it doesn't contain uh, this ingredient called ectoin, but uh, other sunscreens uh, they do. And uh, if you take, uh, for example, a, a company called uh, Bioderma, so like uh, this one here, uh, made for kids, or uh, one of those uh, tinted ones they have here, or they have uh, another one that is also a tinted one called the Dry Touch or New Touch or something like that. And then uh, there is something from uh, a company called uh, Ultra Sun, and uh, it looks uh, like uh, this. And uh, those from Bioderma and uh, this one here from uh, Ultra Sun, they all contain uh, this uh, ingredient called uh, ectoin. And uh, when I uh, asked the uh, ultrasound about what it was uh, because uh, why they're calling it an anti-aging uh, sunscreen uh, because it says uh, up here which you can maybe see is they say that it is uh, anti-aging and uh, I uh, asked them uh, what it was and they said that uh, it was the ingredient ectoin that uh, caused them to call this product uh, anti-aging uh, because one thing you could say is that all sunscreens they are kind of like anti-aging because uh, they are shielding you from uh, the UV light which is uh, damaging to our cells and it will give like a sunspots and uh, all that sort of thing which no one really likes that much so um, I looked into uh, the ectoin uh, molecule and um, I found some uh, scholarly articles and uh, I will of course link to them uh, below so you can read them uh, yourself. But uh, what they uh, found out was that they wanted to test the uh, various uh, sunscreen uh, ingredients and uh, one of the ingredients was uh, ectoin because uh, ectoin is not a UV filter and uh, it is not an antioxidant. So uh, what it is is that it is an, an osmolite and what it means is that uh, it helps uh, a cell to maintain uh, moisture and that's why you might see it uh, in um, uh, normal cream so like a moisturizing cream or something like that uh, because it helps uh, the cells uh, retain uh, moisture so what uh, where does it come from well it does uh, come from uh, bacteria and um, usually when uh, a bacteria is uh, very stressed like a uh, stress for, for water so like when it's a, a drought situation or something like that then uh, ectoin is actually uh, maintaining uh, the water level inside uh, the bacteria uh, so it can uh, survive and uh, what uh, is going on uh, in respect of uh, uv light then uh, we are talking about the uva light and uh, ectoin uh, is protecting the skin uh, against the damages from uh, UVA light and that is why a lot of uh, sunscreens or some sunscreens they are using uh, that ingredient. So um, if you have a sunscreen uh, that um, does not contain um, ectoin, is there then something you can do yourself? Uh, well, uh, there is because uh, I looked a little bit uh, on various uh, web pages and so on in order to find uh, if I could uh, somehow add uh, ectoin uh, to my uh, skincare routine just in general or just before I put on uh, a sunscreen. And uh, I came across uh, something very novel like uh, a nose spray. Uh, and it uh, it looks uh, like this and it's from a, a company called uh, Benadryl. And... Um, what it basically is, is like um, it's a, a nose spray and I guess you have seen that uh, before and it uh, it looks uh, like uh, this. And uh, what it contains is uh, it contains a solution of uh, 2% uh, ectoin and then it is just uh, diluted uh, in water and then uh, 0 0.9 uh, salt. So uh, that is basically just a little bit of salt uh, because if you take... Um, this is a nose spray, so it's meant to be going into your nose. And uh, I think that most people know that if you just take a uh, plain water and put it up your nose, it rather hurts. So that is why they are putting a little bit of uh, natrium chloride or sodium chloride, as you would say in England uh, or in America. Uh, and that is uh, in order to make it uh, physiological. So uh, that is uh, so it doesn't annoy and um, irritate your... Um, 
membranes uh, in your nose. So, uh, have I tried it up my nose? No, I haven't because I did not buy it in order to use it for my nose. So, uh, instead what I did, uh, and just to say a little practical thing, uh, it has this sort of um, protection cap on it you have to take off. And uh, as you see, it looks like this. And when the cap is on, it looks like that. And what it means is that if you are in a hurry, <laughs> then um, you might uh, mistake uh, that it has not, that it actually has the cap on. So uh, then it will just collect in here. And you think, as I did several times today, that it had actually already broken, but it did not break. It was just because the cap was still on. So anyway, uh, what I would do is that um, when I have just uh, clenched my face, then uh, before I put uh, anything else on, I would actually uh, just take this one and spray my face with it. So normally uh, when you have a spray that is meant for going uh, on your face, then it will be like something you press it down like that. But this one here is meant to go up your nose and therefore it is a, a little bit uh, different. So you have to, to press this, but you can't just take it like this and then do like that because uh, then uh, all the water will go into the bottom and then uh, it will be difficult. So basically what you need to do, uh, now I have my uh, skincare on uh, today, uh, but I did use this before I put all that stuff on. So um, what I did was uh, I took uh, both my fingers uh, like that. You can just like it quick demonstration you can maybe see if it do like that it goes up like that and it's just water and uh, egg to eat and a little bit of uh, salt sodium chloride so uh, you do uh, like this close your eyes of course and then uh, well usually when you're spraying something on your face you shouldn't inhale but in this case basically it, it doesn't matter if you inhale it because if it's actually meant to go into your nose up your nostrils so uh, like uh, this you just look into it and then kind of like that and then it kind of like tastes a bit salty um, but um, yeah it's pretty easy and quick to use so in here there is uh, about a or there is a 10 milliliters in it so um, is that an expensive product uh, I don't think so but uh, if you overdo it obviously you will go through a bottle like this very quickly uh, so maybe you should uh, just put it on where you are thinking that uh, your skin is most uh, vulnerable so uh, on the uh, the cheek points and um, there and there so where you would normally get um, a sunburn firstly on your nose obviously that is uh, something that is very often gets very red so kind of like on your nose and then uh, on the cheeks if you want to save a little bit on it but I think uh, this was about five or six pounds for 10 milliliters so um, yes uh, does it hurt no uh, it doesn't it, it just uh, when I put it on a clean face it was just like having a little sprinkle of uh, water on my face so it didn't hurt or anything like that of course there will be people that are allergic and there will be all sort of stuff that can happened because we are not all the same but uh, as such uh, this should not be something that should be um, in any way uh, problematic so that was just a, a little a quick uh, trick as to how or a tip uh, as uh, how you could uh, get uh, egg to eat, uh, easily uh, into your skincare because a lot of uh, creams that uh, if you for example take uh, this uh, ultra sun uh, sunscreen here then uh, it has egg in it but it is very uh, it's not a cheap product but it's not uh, kind of like uh, as expensive as something like this which actually does not have uh, egg in in it but has uh, a lot of other things uh, in it so uh, this one here from uh, bioderma they are certainly not uh, cheap either they are kind of like that that is what a sunscreen kind of like cost you can get cheap ones and you can get some very expensive one but uh, on average i think this one here they are kind of like um or this one here from la roche per se they are kind of like uh, 50 milliliters and it would be kind of like 18 or 17 pounds at least in england uh so uh, that is kind of like it's not super expensive it's not super cheap If you are just in general liking to do something for uh, 
your cells so that they are uh, being uh, kept in a better condition then uh, this certainly could be a cheap uh, alternative there are uh, sp specialized creams out there with ectoin in it So uh, yes, uh, this was just a little a bit of a budget-friendly uh, tip as how you could get uh, Ectoin into your uh, skincare. So uh, yeah, if you would like to see more of this sort of videos, please subscribe, hit the bell, and do all the things you must do in order to be notified when I upload more of this sort of videos. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.